This is the one with draconian dragons. Two empires, both alike in dignity. 3D chess. A gargantuan anus monster. And some last minute wheelie bins. It's called Frontier in Space. Here we go. We're embarking on a voyage all through time and all through space. Counting Daleks, Talent Boot, and the Cybertronic race. And Torrens look like taters, and Silurians all have wonky scales. And the Doctor has a TARDIS, we're reviewing all his tales. Who back when? Reviewing all of who there is. Who back when? Subscribe and rate on iTunes, please. Episode by episode, we're trudging down this temporal road. Come join us on this odyssey. What other choice could there be than who back when? Who Back When? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to C067 of Who Back When, a Doctor Who podcast. Or Docpast. <laughs> Do you realise that over the last New Who, you didn't say that? Do and you realise that I added that in the post credit sequence? Oh, right. <laughs> I could hear Drew's smugness coming down I know, down I know. There. I didn't realise that until afterwards. He was still in the room and he was, and he just went like, you didn't say it. Immediately recorded it. Yeah, yeah so, watch out for it. It's post credit. Fans of the, the podcast will already <laughs> know that the, the two voices you hear is mine, Nickel, and Punkin. Hello, Podcast Land. And, and hello, Nick. And new people, this is us. How Hi. are you doing, guys? Nice to meet you. Yeah. So, festive, <laughs> festive podcast. Yes, um, we're recording next to a Christmas tree. Yeah, which makes things <laughs> festive. Um, and with martinis. Which Dreadful get... martinis. Ah, well, I I'm really okay apologise. I thought this vodka would be nice, but it's revolting. It seems all right to me. Guess me where I'm going. It's an entirely appropriate drink for this cereal. Okay. <laughs> Which, based on, spoiler alert, the first line of the Beast Cow, <laughs> yeah. I take it you'd... Which was contributed yeah, 100% a, by you, was, because that, I do not agree with that first line. I did write that one. That was the first thing that came out of my brain hole. Explain yourself. Wait, should we do the Beast Cow and Let's then you explain yourself? Let's do the Beast Cow and then yeah. I'll explain myself. Okay. Time for us to synopsize, lubify and summarize. So take a view and grab a brief and listen to this overview. This free for all we like to call a bite sized chunk of who. Bite sized chunk of who. In a series of events that could have been interesting, nothing interesting happens. Disagree. The burgeoning human empire <laughs> and the burgeoning draconian empire are at odds when both parties accuse each other of violating their peace treaty with illegal acts of aggression and extreme prejudice against flour. Mm. Damn that flower. It transpires, however, that, <laughs> it transpires, however, that the Ogrons are behind the, the attacks and the Master behind them. And behind the Master, some last-minute Daleks. When the Doctor and Joe coincidentally materialize in the middle of the conflict, the Master shifts focus and decides to ruin their day. Beast cow over. You are welcome. Aren't you just? So, you hate this. Nah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> um, so, nah, yeah. Well, so, actually, the first episode of this six-parter, yeah. um, which is, to me, it's maybe, actually, if, I, if we were to track back through all the reviews, mm -hmm. I wonder if I just hate six-parters. Maybe that's it. I'd just lose verve. Unfortunately, the next one's a six-parter as well, well I think. Yeah, I know. It's, but then it's after that, I think we go back to four-parters. But maybe that's a function of, you know, the, my, my hatred is, is, this, is the six-parter part. But... The first part, I actually really did enjoy. I thought, shit, this is going to be cool. This is going to be like, you know, it's, it's empire building. It's very First right. World War. It's like, you know, shit's going to happen. People accusing each other of stuff. and Yeah, yeah. Th there's a lot of tension. This peace treaty is not going to last. Yeah, yeah, and the whole idea that there's the Ogron... Oh, or is that in the first episode? Yeah, it is in episode one. Well, because then I thought, Ogron's Daleks, Ogron's Daleks, yeah. right? And then I was kind of the pregnancy of the, like, does who knows the truth bit just lasts too long. Like, it just, they just, they should have accelerated the action. Well, it, it's too repetitive, isn't it? It's too like, repetitive. We, we have too that. many back and forths. It's some bullshit. Um, <laughs> what would have been really good is that basically if some version of a war or some version of political unrest actually manifested itself in some way. Yeah, which it doesn't. It really doesn't. The, all we get is an American chap in yeah. episode six, five or six, on TV or in a Skype call, just shouting for That's, 30 seconds, so and then he disappears. My favourite thing about all of those. So, like, the proto... <laughs> Uh, well, not proto, the the post-Donald Trump Trump yeah. guy. He's like, clearly there are no crowds like in the sequence at oh, all. Oh, no, no, um, Also that they... He's shot against a tree somewhere <laughs> in England. <laughs> also, <laughs> the, they just keep mentioning just random parts of the world as if we're like, oh, okay, get it, world government. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, among the places that they mention, th th <laughs> this is, uh, I'm going to pop a screenshot on whobackone.com. There's a news card. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. Like, and there are subtitles on the TV in the, in the shot. And it talks about Tokyo, spelled with an I. <laughs> 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 Screenshot on whobackone.com. Oh, no, no. That's, Tokayo. That's the, the much, you know, after Tokyo is raised, from, raised <laughs> to the ground by Godzilla, they start a new one. <laughs> but 
Yeah, I don't know. I like those. Like, the civil arrest in Nanking. <laughs> <laughs> also, with this giant world government is like very executive so there's a con- congress or senate right that's referred to do they refer to so them? so the president at some point when by his her general is saying well i can overrule you and said well you need a senate confirmation for that oh wow type of thing i missed that but again none of these people are involved all we get is the president saying executive shit we have the mirror image on draconia is that the planet or draconia no, no, but draconia or seems more emperor Oh, it's right. I mean, it's, yes, it is an emperor, and it's a, a role that is inherited. He, I mean, his son is part of the main cast as well. It's, but it, you have the same situation where if you go to anyone in authority, you go to the very top. Yeah. Like if you want to talk to anyone, you go to the president of Earth, or you yeah. go to the emperor of Draconia. You don't go to any. There's yeah, no, there no ministers. There's no, no like no, no. civil servants. There's no bureaucracy yeah. either. I mean, let's set aside the fact that it is super duper easy to get an audience with the emperor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that he must be micromanaging everything in his empire, because if something happens, well, we're going to have to try to see what the emperor has to there's say that, about There's tax reform, there's yeah. the turning of the Christmas lights into Draconia. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything. But aside from that, like it, it is literally head of the earth, head of Draconia, they're basically talking to each other. And they're weird lieutenants. Yeah. That are, again, they not, have their like political henchmen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. are not governmental. Exactly. <laughs> one's a military. And the other one's the son of the emperor. He's like the vice... Well, he's going to grow up to be the emperor. I don't... This is, see, the thing I'm trying to get across podcast land is I don't think this is how you mitigate interstellar war. <laughs> really? I think you might need to have some sort of actual earnest delegation. What? <laughs> <laughs> Rather than just march in the random room to go, this works you. Super well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question for you. Mm-hmm. There was a war between yes. uh, Draconia and Earth. Yes. You said 20 years ago before I think it was, So at some point, um, when the son of the Draconian Empire, yeah. Emperor, um, has been imbued with the actual, like, has seen the Ogron and is like, okay, well, I'll come back to you and convince the, the president. Yeah. And gets there. And then they talk about how that particular general... He he blasted someone out of the sky. Yeah. And it, it, I got the impression that it might have been sort of first contact situation, something like that. Like, oh, well, well the- we were going to meet up somewhere. We were They were stuck in some storm or whatever. The Earth guy shot down the Draconian ship and that led to war. Here's my question for mm. you. Since then, has no one ever thought to just tell the humans, oh, no, 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 that was a mistake. Because that's what the Emperor's son tells the general, who pressed the fire button, and immediately goes, oh, well, I guess we're... I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. We are now brothers in arms. We're fighting on the same side. Let me buy buy your pint. Problem Um, problem solved. Yeah. I mean, hitherto, I've dedicated my life to being an incredibly jingoistic, uh, top military leader, bent on destroying your people. And also bent on taking over the human government... With military force. Oh, no, no, he, no, no. He, no, he does say no, at he one point, like, maybe we don't need a, a politics. Maybe we need the military to take over here. Well, he does say that, but he also, when, when she, uh, the president, challenges him about that, saying, oh, oh, you know, I assume you're the one that's going to be leaders. He said, well, we're friends. No, you know I wouldn't do that. Um, and she seems to take that as real. I assume they were fucking... <laughs> I assume that neither one of them has genitalia. Well, no, I don't know. <laughs> really? Why were they fucking? I don't know. It was just really tender in the way that he was like, I would not do that to you. Either they were just very close friends or... or but, but then I'm also like, you know, all the big power political dramas that are always like everyone in the cabinet's fucking, um, <laughs> you know, some house of card shit. Hmm. He is in her office a lot. A lot. I There's mean, no need to be. He has he, his own office. He, and he should be commanding armies and shit. He's at war. <laughs> no, not yet. He's no, not no. at war. He, but he wants to be at war. He wants to be at yeah. war. Yeah. He has no time. You're right. They're clearly fucking. <laughs> <laughs> or have at some point. Like, 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago. Yeah. And since then, he's been praying for war <laughs> to distract him. Okay. So how long was the first war? And then how long has this peace been? Because so if the thing was 20 years ago, and let's say the war lasted a couple of years. Yeah. The peace hasn't been that long. I mean, as in, so 15 years in peacetime, whilst great... Is not a significant period of time. No, it must be less than that, right? If it's 20 years ago since the war started, less than half yeah. of that time, it must be peacetime. Not less than half. It could be, it could be, yeah, the war could have lasted a year. But these people hate each other, and it, yeah, it but... very much seems like, oh, well, 
we have to tread on eggshells here. We, we don't really know what we're doing with this relationship between our planets. Everything's super fragile. Yeah, but still, like a year, like that, that doesn't really, like the Japanese Russian war was very short, the Indian Pakistan, the three Indian Pakistan wars were very also, short. Also, if it's a too long a time, it seems very, very likely that at some point, just as a topic of conversation, at some diplomatic meals, you know, a draconian sitting next to a human and just, they just go, Oh, oh yeah, by the way, that whole thing was a mistake. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if, yes. If, if too long a time, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to say that they put down their guns like last week. And it, therefore, this topic of conversation hasn't come up. No, see, that's, that can't be because they're so... Uh, so the Draconians are so committed to the priest process and say, yeah. you know, this is how we've been doing things. Of course, Whereas if it was that fragile, it would just break down immediately at the first sign of someone doing something improper, right? Oh, that's a good point as well. I don't, uh, I don't really... So do the preservation of it, again, not... We bring up Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek in general quite a lot on this yeah. show, but it's just, you know, it's one of those fucking monolith of... of uh, uh, fantasy and science fiction but not discovery but star trek yeah no no I, but, i'm but, still not 100% pro no, discovery no no i'm not sure either but basically the the law that the there was a war with the klingons and then there was a really fucking long time before they reengaged that's true right yeah that's true that bit and i thought this was a version like you know that there was a war a, a century ago these you know, empires have been building up. Except it wasn't a century ago because it was exactly. in the general's lifetime. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a bullshit. Yeah, no, no, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, they should have just done away with that. Oh. <laughs> did you at any point, because this is one of my completely erroneous notes from part one, did you at any point, after realizing that the draconians weren't actually draconians, the humans weren't actually humans in, in, during oh, the, these the, little battles? The Ogrons. Yeah, but before knowing that they were Ogrons, did you at any point think that maybe the general was a Dalek? No. I absolutely thought so. Oh, that would have been a good one. That would have been great. Yeah, it, I, I wrote down my prediction in part one. Ooh, I wonder if the general is a Dalek, and then literally my next note is, nope, Ogrons. <laughs> that would have been brilliant. I mean, I don't know how they would have affected that, because it's supposed to be about the fear center of your brain and shit. Yeah, but we didn't know that at the time. Yeah. Right? No, we find that out in, like, episode five, at no, which no, point... No, 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 because the first thing that Joe sees is a drashing. Yes, yes, that's true. That's yeah, true. and I think Doc says it's because it must work on the face. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Brain. You're right. Can we talk about that for a second? Come on. Because that doesn't work at all. You can't control this. How does the master know that all of the Earthlings are going to see a draconian ship and that there are draconian soldiers? Why isn't one person seeing a snake and okay. another one seeing a spider? And so another one seeing, is... like, a long-haul flight? That wasn't my biggest Heights. issue. So one of my... <laughs> my, my the, 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 with that particular issue... I guess he's playing off the fact that there is this Cold War situation and it's, let's say it's at the height of, say, McCarthyism and, and, and the biggest threat. Yeah, but people are afraid of other things no, as well. No, 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 quite. But maybe the most prevalent fear, the most like uh, talked about and communicated in news stories, you know, he's playing on that idea. Uh, he's, he's, he's betting on Yeah, but I think that's bullshit. It probably is. <laughs> my, that, my, the really, really what bad thing about this fucking feature, yeah. this, this tool, is that sound doesn't work. Like, like everyone in the room... <laughs> Should be affected, including the Akrons. <laughs> yeah, that's true. However, then towards the end, when the Doctor affects their, like, third or fourth escape in mm. this mm, yeah. relatively repetitive serial, he has to modify the device, the hypnosound device, mm. in a particular way, I assume, in order to make it compatible with Ogrons. Oh, yeah, he does say something about them being too stupid for, for fear or something like they're that. Too st they're too stupid to uh, be able to give any information in the, what's it called, the mind... Oh, yes, the mind... Mm, Reader. Uh, mind uh, uh, probe. Mind, mind probe. probe. Well done. Oh. Yeah. When in doubt, probe. <laughs> Did you like the mind probe, by the way? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Two things here. <laughs> so both <laughs> civilizations have a mind probe yep. of essentially the same spec. This is what I'm saying. They're both identical civilizations. Perfect, right? Yeah. Now, why would you need <laughs> any form of judicial system? If you just have this device, which doesn't torture him, by the way. No, it doesn't hurt anyone. It's just like, a, it's like a, an incredibly good lie detector. Why would you need any? Because yeah. they, they, they say there's due process and stuff in there. Like, yeah. Why would you need any of that? Why not just you know, mind probe everyone? Everyone. Is it implied that it would be torture to a regular human, but that the doctor being... Uh, I was looking out for possessing that, because that's an incredible what I was, mind. I was hoping for, that, that you only use it incredibly sparingly because of the horrible, because it's like cruel and unusual punishment. I reckon that, that um, is it. But we, they never said it. <laughs> 
Does isn't doesn't he have like a headache afterwards? He does have a slight headache. Yes. Okay. So I reckon that was that what would they li- liquefy my brain. Yeah, like it, I think that was their intention, and then maybe it didn't really come across in script and or production. But <laughs> but we've had something similar to a mind probe on Doctor Who before in the Space Museum, I think it was with William Hartnell, and it was way better than this. It was like basically it was a TV hooked up to your brain, mm. and they oh, would and then, then you could see all the you thoughts. could see exactly. And it, normally you would you would get to see like oh well did you rob this bank? Ta-da! And then you get to see the guy robbing a bank on the telly. But which the doctor, doesn't make any sense. No, yes, because everyone has a camera following yeah, them around. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but 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 in in is uh, everyone else omniscient but me? Because that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing us from over there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so Hartnell, he was so good at manipulating this mind probe thing. It was just like a chair that he would sit in, that he could project any images onto that TV screen, including, as I recall, uh, a man on a penny farthing, a bunch of seals, and I want to say... Seals the singer. Uh, yes, a bunch of <laughs> bunch of clones of Seals the Singer. The only Seals song I know. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to say... A graying tower. William Hartnell in a body spandex and a bowler hat. I shit you not, screenshot is already on Hulu. I'm 100% sure that I did that. <laughs> well, that's good to know. This would have been, that would have been better in this case, I think. Like, have him manipulate the answer in some way, rather than just, like, I'm telling you the truth, man, your lie detector is breaking. Well, it's the most um, straightforward thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, if you're okay. telling the truth, just tell the truth and... Thing will... But then they don't believe it anyway. No, quite. But but so that, again, that makes the dropping of the general's agenda all the more perplexing. He's yeah. in in he is presented with at least some empirical evidence at, at the state of the art of their civilization. Yeah, and he's too he's too blinded by his hatred and his and his you know jingoistic agenda to to, sh- to shake from it. But so the president would... is also blinded by it. No, quite well, not blinded, but. But but quite but why then when presented with your nemesis that then appeals to your fucking sense of rationality do you flip flop that is not the function of a suspicious person no that's true <laughs> like, that's not what suspicious people do no that's very true and if he wants to Can you imagine if, Nigel Farage going actually I met this wonderful Austrian couple <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out you're the Hitlers. <laughs> 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 uh, you set them. Yeah, I'll set them up. You knock them out. <laughs> that might we may have peaked. <laughs> we may... No, but that's a fair point. I mean, if if he has any intention to further his fairly racist agenda or potentially racist agenda, in it's order either to... racist or expansionist or some melange, either one would yeah. would be equally suited to him fighting the Daleks or the Ogrons or mm. whomever else is behind the Ogrons, right? It doesn't have to be the Draconians. Mm. But maybe he just holds a grudge because he was... He's the dude from Star Trek Discovery. He's Michael from Star mm. Trek Discovery who effectively started a war by shooting down one person, mm. right? Or one ship in his case. Yeah, but the time frames don't work out for this to be significant. No. <laughs> and his ability to flip-flop doesn't really figure it either. His hatred does not run deep, it turns out. Uh, which is good, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's um, fantastic. But, <laughs> but I think they were basically... I think basically the, the, the Incredible Hulk got halfway through this and like, oh, shit, oh. we need to move on. Oh, no. Wait, did you say six episodes? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, here we go again. Everyone get back in the prison ship. <laughs> Here's some cheese wire. <laughs> <laughs> cheese wire is great. What how, the fuck? Was how that? many escapes do we have here? So we, we have okay. Doc escaping the cell, mm-hmm. escaping the convoy to the president's office. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, almost escaping, then being popped in the cell again. No, but what, at some point they want to be captured to have an audience with the president. That is their plan. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But then he goes to prison, he escapes from prison. He does. He goes to the moon prison. Awesome. We really need to talk about Holy shit, I love the moon prison. But wait, wait, wait. wait, There's more. (laughs) He gets taken from the moon prison on a ship. He escapes the cell with the cheese wire. And then he escapes the ship. out. He does a moonwalk, a spacewalk, which is great, by the way. Wires and all. And then I'm pretty sure he escapes again when we get to um, Ogron. Okay, let's pull this right back, all the way back. Yeah, right? he does, let's because this, he uses the device. Back. So they've been captured by the humans, and yeah. there is some, they're, they're under some sort of custody. And the Draconians, the Draconian Emperor, yeah. and, and his, his son, 
say, well, we should go, we should talk to them. Or no, is it the emperor or the draconian says, we should talk to them, but we can't break any protocol. No, we, we must. Oh, I know exactly where you're going with this. So to be able to do this, to be able to have this audience with these, these um, to, to prove our innocence of our empire and actually we've been abiding by the yeah. treaty, what we need to do is it's get SEAL Team 6. And kill a bunch of those <laughs> of people the, that we have a peace treaty with. take these, yeah, and which will prove our innocence. I, but not just that. We're going to kidnap them in order to interrogate them. So we're going to set up a transport of them to us so that we can interrogate them. And along the way, we will kidnap them. What the fuck? Like, if they did nothing, they could have just gone on and interrogated them. Yes. It was on their way to be interrogated that they were kidnapped in order to be interrogated. Yes. It's fucking dumb. Yes. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I can't fucking cope. I, don't <laughs> I loved it so much. That scene, by the way, th- th- this is in episode two, and I I wrote it down. It's just a, a sign that they didn't even have enough script mm. for this one episode, let alone six episodes, because we get a full minute of just walking to the cell footage. Mm. Like a whole minute, just them walking. Also, uh, there's about five minutes of Joe and Dr. Chat whilst he's cutting through the bars. Oh, um, and and then even more of just Joe talking at the screen whilst yeah you're you know, right the doctor does some relatively inconsequential stuff. Well, he does, but but it looks very cool, and they clearly spend a lot of money on the spacewalk scene, and that's I think that's the only reason. It's like oh well, we're gonna milk this scene for all that it's worth. In fact, we're gonna have the same scene later on in the serial. I don't know, spacewalk was cool. I, it was I liked cool. the spaceships. I loved the spaceships. Do you mean oh sorry, the spaceship? Which the everyone spaceship. uses. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> everyone has the same cockpit. You've got to believe, man. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do. I, I loved it as well. It was quite nice to see that it was just numerical. It's mm. just a TV screen and a bunch of numbers, and you manipulate the numbers, and that's how you travel around. It wasn't the, the standard sci-fi spaceship of you have a joystick, and mm. you press a button that says jet or something, you know? Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> In that same full minute of walking to the cell footage, I've also written, you might have a theory about this, Where did the Doc suddenly get his coat from? He was in his dinner jacket when the TARDIS was taken away. And later on, he also gets his cape. He never goes into the TARDIS. We've talked about the cape a lot, haven't we? Where we imagine it to reside in some sort of Time Lord pocket. Oh, okay. Now, so he... Oh. Can these pockets just be... Why doesn't he just put himself in the pocket? Is it like a portable hole? Is this a Dungeons and Dragons situation where you could just like, here, portable hole? No... I think it's it must be like like the TARDIS or like the prison ship or like all the various other Time Lord technologies. It's a thing. It's a pocket in his jacket. But okay. how big can they be? So in his dinner jacket, it's a big enough pocket to house a cape. coat yeah. and a cape. Mm. I, bu- I can buy it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's the... Yeah, probably the most interesting thing about this damn serial. What? No! Go and hit me then. Tell me. Okay, well, can Convince we just... Convince me. Can we just start off with something very superficial? The Draco- oh, g- g- good, because there are, no, uh, you know, there are many deeper layers to get to. Well, we've already touched upon the political whatever, yeah. so we can, we can delve deeper into that as well, and we haven't talked about the master and that dynamic, mm. but just to talk about something very superficial, the Draconians, they look fantastic. Okay, they do look very good. They're also kind of Asian. Yeah, it's the clothing in particular, like the, the the shoulder paddy bits. Exactly. Also, I, the deference of the court and all that. Oh, maybe. You know, well, quite, you mean the fact that there is an emperor? The fact there's an emperor and how stringent they are about the you know courtly ritual. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I sort of, and I, whether this is the correct analogy or not, I basically took that as like the Japanese empire. Oh, interesting. Aside from the fact that they look great, my notes about them are draconians ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> And I love their clothes because they look like a cucumber had sex with a pagoda. Exactly. Right? Yes. There you go. Exactly. Cucumber had sex with a pagoda is absolutely accurate. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I pride myself in my very accurate analogies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where do you want to take this? Prison? Yeah, okay. Let's go, sp- let's go moon prison. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a political prisoner. Yep. And you've been, ta- you've been in- taken to the moon. Yeah. Do they know your name? Do they take your name? They didn't seem to register anyone. No. Do do they make you wear prison garb like everyone else, or are you just like the exception that disproves <laughs> the rule? No, so they don't. But then they do, the, the governor does ask the other, so the screw is also an inmate. Oh, is he? So everyone on this moon is a political is a, prisoner. Really? Apart from the screws, which are sourced from other violent Oh, I didn't get that at colonies. all. Oh, interesting. I think they say that, um, or roughly that. That seems really... The, go- the governor just turns up right at the beginning and says, make you, you know, get him some clothes. Because the, the, that screw 
works with Professor Bumbletron the Fifth. Uh, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> I forgot about your yeah, Bumbletron. Yeah. <laughs> I love your Bumbletron. We're on number five, I think. <laughs> um, to to have their weird, ill-fated... Um, to have their, their very well-orchestrated escape. When is it happening? Oh, it's happening right now. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go, baby. Uh, I'm ready now. Every day is game day. <laughs> you do not score till you score. <laughs> he has waited potentially years... <laughs> for for just this one plan to happen, which the guy relays to him verbally right next to a guard <laughs> in the canteen where, he, where it's basically just like, well, I mean, yeah, you have enough time to finish your plate, but after that, we got to go. <laughs> 3D chess was cool. 3D chess, yeah, Star Trek's 3D chess appears in this screenshot here. In fact, comparison screenshot between this 3D chess and 3D chess from Star Trek. Which one are you going to go with? Yes, no, no. Oh, I'm thinking TOS. It shows up a lot in, in both. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I, I imagine that it appears in several Star Trek series. I remember it from, like, Spock beating mm. the shit out of people in 3D chess. Yeah. I remember uh, it a lot from Quark's bar. Oh, do they yeah. play it there? I think so. Well, they play various games. They play so. something... What, what, okay, hang on. Star Trek DS9 and Tangent. What is the other game that they play oh, in Quark's shit. bar? Oh, it's, you know the thing. It's it's like a, it, yeah, I know, but it's all for gold press latinum, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Bing bong, future pong in here. That would be Tongo. Bing bong. It's the roulette equivalent. Yeah. Like the... Or oh. craps. It's more like craps. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fuck. Shit balls. Yeah, you're right, because they, they even throw something. Mm. Like, the, I guess, sort of dice. Yeah. Balls. Dilithium crystals. <laughs> you're a madman throwing dilithium <laughs> crystals in here. <laughs> Come on, baby. Reverse this polarity. <laughs> oh, we get one of those, by the way. We do. We he do. Reverse the polarity of this um, deus ex machina <laughs> machine. <laughs> Soundbite from episode one, 16 minutes in. Doctor, what are you doing? I'm reversing the polarity of my ultrasonic screwdriver's power source, thereby converting it into an extremely powerful electromagnet. There you go. <laughs> Which turns it into a something. I can't remember what it is he reverses. What does he do? The polarity of the, of the sonic screwdriver. Oh, really? Um, to do something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that noise. <laughs> That noise. Listen back, ladies and gentlemen, five seconds to that noise, and that's how I feel. <laughs> I'm sorry that you didn't like this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk Delgado. Okay. Is this the last time that we see him? Well, I was under the impression the last time we saw him was the last time we saw him, but um, perhaps I was wrong. I was under the impression that the next time, as in this time, would be the last time, but it ends on, <laughs> but, but it ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Yes. So, so I don't know a, if this is... Because, again, uh, the other question I was going to have is, is, is this a six-parter or is this a 12-parter? Depending on whom you ask, it is either or. So <laughs> it, it, is, it was uh, marketed What do you as, think? Well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's a six-parter and then that the next six-parter is a Dalek story. And, that, and that's why the Daleks only show up at the very last minute here. It's just sort of as a... You know, like in most episodic, not episodic, most uh, TV shows, most box sets nowadays, they will end with something that leads on to the next story because it's a, it's a narrative, it's an arc that reaches the full well, season. Well, quite, but I don't think so. If you really think about it, the entirety of the... So any peril yeah. or any consequence in this yeah. is all leading to the end of this sixth episode, i.e. the yeah. Daleks. So this is just a six-episode run-up. <laughs> to the next six-episode yeah. serial. Uh, I think in a way, yeah. Fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> so frustrating. This was in TARDIS Wikia under, in the trivia section as, as saying that it is marketed as a two separate six-episode story arcs, but that in some cases, some people consider them to be one 12-episode arc. I think The BBC is, does not. I think it's a 12-episode arc, and I'm halfway through... And I'm just wanting something to happen. See, but then, then the annoying thing is, but this is a Dalek story, and the Daleks don't show up until five minutes well, before the end. Exactly. Uh, but, but that's why I'm thinking this is a Master Ogron story slash Draconian story, and the next one, I'm imagining the Draconians won't even show up in the next like one. Like I said, I can't agree because there's no fucking consequence. Oh, like, like no, no earnest big consequence for anyone. I think we're going to see that consequence... In the, the in the in the second half of this serial, yeah. But okay, so here's what I think. I think we're gonna have an entirely separate story, like a different story that right. we ha that hasn't been set up now, like a completely different six episode serial, right? Uh, but then in that serial, they're going to interpolate teeny tiny bits of 
oh, so there is a comeuppance. Like, the monster is probably going to show up in the next one now, which I'm quite pleased because otherwise we, you know, we just had the last of the master and we didn't get a, a, a farewell. Mm. Uh, so he's probably going to show up and then he's probably going to do the standard master thing of, oh, fuck, it turns out I can't trust these aliens that I've uh, teamed up with. Doctor, please help me. And then he's going to be arrested. Do you think and then he's going to escape in an ice cream truck. These aliens are the antithesis of my people and have, since time in Moriam, been our like binary yeah <laughs> why would that be a good why would they be a good bedfellow yeah, but he's a renegade he's even described as a renegade of the Gallifreyans. Yeah. yeah he does say that doesn't he the doctor uh, i'm completely happy with that otherwise completely yeah a hundred percent happy checks out <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> First off, in even here, even though in Classic Who we've already at this point heard, yeah, the Daleks, they're like the most dangerous civilization or, you know, alien race. It, have we really found out that they are the um, the nemeses of the Time Lords? Or are they just like, oh, they're one of these badass races out there? No, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm I'm rewriting. I think that's something that comes later on. Oh, yeah. Or, or maybe I'm misremembering. I don't No, No, maybe you're right. I mean, the doctors always gave them. Oh yeah, yeah. Their Jews as evil. He gave them what for? Yeah. No, no. But I mean, he's always gave them the correct evil props. Oh, oh yeah, I see. But I know, not sure he's ever pitted them. So at the uh, right then, the absolute final act here is yeah. the doctor trying to communicate with the uh, has been wounded. Yeah. And is communicating with the Time Lord. Correct. How far are we off the end of Pertwee? Oh, that's a super good question. Hang on, I will find out. Because he looks like he got wounded to the head, right? Really? Was he? Something like that. I, I did think, oh, wow, this looks almost like the prelude to a regeneration, but mm. that's not what this is. Are you thinking, well, now he's going to stumble for a few episodes and then he re regenerates, basically, yeah. like a Capaldi situation? Mm. Right. We're basically one season away. He has one more season, but they're short seasons. They're like they're five-episode seasons. So next one is Planet of the Daleks, then we have Green Death. That's season 10. Done. And then he is only in season 11, which is five episodes. Uh, five series. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then. Fair enough. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say this. Three of those five are six episodes. But after that, it goes down radically. Like four, four, two, four, et cetera, et cetera. Two? Well, how long are the twos? Uh, the Sontaran experiment. This is fourth Doctor. This is Tom Baker. Oh, my God. We're so close to Tom Baker. Hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Done. Sorry, <laughs> I just had to. I just had to have a quick climax. Yeah. So theoretically, he could spend a whole season, as in five serials, limping. I don't think that's going to be the case. No, no, you're probably right. But uh, yeah, so he he's communicated with the Time Lords. Are we going to have? Uh, the, is the planet of the Daleks going to be Daleks versus Time Lords? Holy shit! Holy shit! That's maybe worth th being excited about. Yeah, and maybe that's where the the two polar opposites, political and ideological stances, maybe that's where it comes to fruition. I mean, that'd be badass. Oh, wow. It, it might make up some way. It might assuage some of my fucking... Just can you all, can you be angry and apathetic? Is that a possibility? <laughs> I don't know about angry and apathetic. I'm definitely succeeding in being both angry and enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiastically angry. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I love the really hammy, terrible shit, and I and I love picking apart something that is incredibly poorly written. But that being now, does said, that mean it gets a good rating? No, not necessarily. What, actually, that we, but we, I don't find this to be a aside. bad serial. What does a rating consist of? Are we saying objectively, or, or not objectively, subjectively, this is how we think of this particular writing, or how it made us feel? Both. Uh, all of the above. There's lots of, there are lots of things that come into play in a rating. Well, what do you use? You I don't know. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I think that's been the thing, but I don't think I've ever gone down the road of, oh, it's so awful, um, and I love awful things. Oh, no, no, no. You, I have given horrifically low ratings to things that have been awful, and I have loved them for it, but they are not deserving so of a 5.0 because they're so shit. How do you, like, um, mitigate? Because the love is part like of it. Like, so love is part love of web planet. Exactly, love is part of a rating. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> and, the, and the critique is part of a rating, so yeah. which one gets precedence? Oh. Oh. We've gone meta, guys. Maybe, We've gone meta. We're rating yeah. our ratings. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe... I'll give you a 4.0. I mean, I... <laughs> 
Oh, don't make me choose. Like I, I, I kind of lo- love maybe as in the the actual emotional reaction that you get from something. Mm. But then that very often is founded on something slightly more cerebral. You, you, if you can analyze something incredibly profoundly, then then that adds to your enjoyment and, and you have a different emotional reaction to it. It's just like anything, man. Yeah. Rate this cucumber soup versus this this, soup. yeah versus uh, yeah, Christmas in the pumpkin household is lean. <laughs> cucumber <laughs> soup, I don't cucumber know. Cucumber soup and imagination <laughs> presents. Oh, God damn it! Sorry, man. That's all right. I won't just be in you. <laughs> well, everyone's a shit. <laughs> <laughs> cucumber soup a thing? I don't think so. <laughs> well, I don't. Know, maybe like no. You Swedish know what? It probably is actually. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. No, I was looking. I was thinking of draconians. And oh right. Came. That was the first thing that popped into my mind. Uh, okay. That's what they call their jizz. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. We're back. <laughs> Speaking of jizz, what did you think of Joe's soup scene where she gets the ogron jizz and she has to tunnel out of uh, with a spoon? She spoons her way out of the cell. Ugh. Really? I loved it. Really? She tunnels out of the cell and then they put them back in the same cell. Yeah. <laughs> It's, Make sure she doesn't get out. It's the best. <laughs> Isn't that great? But so here's an, a comically oversized spoon for your soup. <laughs> I could tell why I have it. I mean, have you ever tried digging with like an actual shovel? Uh, have you ever tried digging with just your hands? She didn't have to do that much work to get out of yeah, that cell. You don't just need like a spoon. topsoil. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> fuck me. Yeah. I. Loved it. In fact, I think Joe's really good in this one, it, with the exception of when she do goes into nursery so? rhyme. Yeah, do, that was shit. But then I, I like, I saw it like that as the genus of units, um, anti-psychic. Yeah, like know, the program or whatever they call it. Yeah, the psychic call it training, telepathic training, yeah, yeah. psychic training. Yeah, maybe this is it. But I thought that she was, aside from the fact that she did it in a really clumsy way. They're like, oh no, Humpty Dumpty, yada, go fuck yourself. But she, yeah, she fucked up the first one. Yeah, she did. Fluff. Yeah, she what did. Is it? Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But what do you aside thought Joe was good? Aside from that, yeah, I thought I thought she was. I mean, she had a little bit more agency than she's had in previous serials. Certainly well, no, better see, than I'm she's not been gonna, in other ones. I'm not gonna sort of uh, detract from her from the lack of agency because no one had any agency because there was nothing to be an agent against. I completely disagree with you. The, what? The doctor who stages, need I go through them again, like five prison breaks? And they are all, all stagnant. <laughs> None of them. He always lands either back in the same prison or between, he doesn't, do you know what I'm saying? But the intention is there. <laughs> the agency is an intention. <laughs> I don't think. But I don't see anyone else taking the initiative. No, He's that's like, what no, I'm saying. It. I'm going to... No, pop, I'm no gonna, one has initiative. I'm going to pop out of this prison cell now. I'm going to do this. Oh, wait, this old dude has a prison escape already lined up. I'm going to piggyback on that. So what I think would have been better, right, yeah. is that war actually breaks out. Yeah, agreed. And then the president, the emperor, the doctor, Joe, is actually are scrambling to put the pieces back together. Yeah, right? agreed. That would have been a much more... Because, like, shit would actually... Like, the clock is ticking. People are definitely dying. Do shit. Yeah, agreed. And I think they tried, in brackets, and failed, to do that in this serial. In... Uh, it's episode five or six, Maybe four or five. After the, tr- the uh, draconian champ, the emperor's son, after he said, oh, yeah, by the way, that was a mistake, mm. and everyone's kind of like, oh, right. After that, they're on a ship, and there is a draconian ship that shows up and attacks them, and they have to... Like, hyperspeed out of there. Yes. That's the only bit of, oh, there is an actual live conflict here that we get. Yeah. And I think that's the attempt by the BBC to do exactly what you just said. I would rather... You could just all that shit off camera. Just been like, oh, yeah, the the human fleet is engaged, the Draconian yeah, fleet. that's true. I agree. Uh, shit. Okay, we need to do stuff. Uh, why isn't the president's position more under threat? Um, because I genuinely believe that there is no Senate, there is no other politician except her yeah but you know the 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 tube keeps telling us that the you know the proletariat is massing at the gates <laughs> you know yeah nanking <laughs> is in flames <laughs> again bad that's sad not to mention tokayo but <laughs> tokayo <laughs> tokayo furious i agree i think that would have made for a more interesting narrative but we didn't get that narrative, so let's live with what we have. No, let's not. <laughs> this show is all about rewriting stuff. Okay, what else would you have rewritten? Um, mm, I would. Yeah, I did just introduce the Daleks earlier. Introduce them earlier. 
maybe cut half of the escapes and half of the back and forths and given the master a slightly more dynamic role rather than just following everyone. So I would have had I'd have had um the war break out sooner. Yeah. The Daleks reveal themselves at least to the Doctor, not the general populace of either empires, but just to to the to the of, Doctor. Okay, so the I Doctor needs to know. The is, Doctor knows the the the, the campaign of people. I the Doctor, Joe, etc. Maybe okay. they know, and they're scrambling to a stop the Daleks, convince the general populaces that they shouldn't be fighting each other, but should be fighting the Daleks. Yeah, um, and then that from there you can pivot into Planet of the Daleks. I mean, well, not knowing what planet on the, the Draconian side as well. Yeah. I think it would have been interesting to have uh, to completely change the point of view of the the son. Have him believe the doctor and be forced to uh, somehow convince the rest of the courts and his dad mm. that this is the case. And then, if as you say, if there's a war, then going through this war, all the conflict that that entails, he would prove his point to his father. Mm. Instead, the only reason that uh, the Draconians are on their side in the first place is because the Ogrons are dumb and they stumble into the throne room. That's basically yeah, yes. it. Yes, although up till that point, the Emperor had been sceptical just generally. Um, he he's like yeah, but not massively sceptical. No, wait, no, he was quite. He was both very sceptical and incredibly accommodating. Yeah, of he all goes these like, people that keep like, fucking up his court rules. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, According to Draconian society, you don't listen to, quote, females. Females have uh, no right to speak. But then the emperor goes, no, 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 she, had a, she made a good point. And then like, oh, no, well, you can't be uh, the doctor because that was 500 years ago. Then again, there is this legend that there was a chap 500 years ago. Maybe you are that guy. <laughs> like, oh, right, okay. He is, the o- he is really the one who's happy to make a compromise. Hmm. No, but I mean, that says he's sceptical about the narrative sold to him by his courtiers and open to all suggestions. Okay. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, what I guess I'm trying to say here is that your version of that court sounds much more interesting. The version where there's every, a bit every of Every other version. Everything is much more interesting yeah. but this. Here's another thing that maybe we could have done more, more with. The anus monster. Why only say, oh, the Ogrons have this religion, basically. They, they fear this, this giant anus. And also have the line, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a giant reptilian creature on this planet. Hope we don't encounter that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if that's going to happen. Uh, and then literally just see it pop up at one point, And that's it. Nothing else. Yeah, that would have been better. Well, we could have had something. We, we could have had... You know, some kind of interact. The the anus monster is a classic serial in itself. You can have four episodes, Doctor this- versus Ogrons, and then there's an anus monster. So, can you have a serial, a six part serial with this many antagonists with such little peril? Hang on, what is the peril? Quite <laughs> the threat of war that never breaks out. The threat of war, yeah. Which I don't really buy because I mean it's a threat that we've already said it. You just have to explain the misunderstanding. <laughs> And then that's it. But, you know, I guess wars have been started under after less. But, well, I just, and like I said, I, I, we just don't realise any of the actual peril um, for what will be. So if, if for example, you might take, so the humans and draconians are each other's antagonists, right? Fine. Yeah. You've got the Ogrons and the Master, which are another set of antagonists to everyone. Yeah. And then the Daleks. So everyone hates each other, <laughs> but no one does shit about it. Uh, nope. Okay, predictions for the continuation of this. I like, see, this is how bad this serial is. We've already started reviewing the se- subsequent... <laughs> oh. Now, based on, based on what we're seeing in this serial, and, and the fact that we end on a cliffhanger, which is really weird, it's super weird, because it really looks like it's setting up, like, Tabula Rasa. He's now flying off in the TARDIS, so he's no longer on Ogron, uh, probably far away from the Draconians and the humans. The master isn't even with him. We know that the Daleks are in pursuit, and we know that he probably wants to go back and save the Earth. That's the only thing. So we're not going to revisit the human dragon. So, the, the, like I said, this is actual Tabula Rasa and not... Well, he hasn't saved the Earth yet, right? Yeah. Well, part... quite, like I said, all the, the, I guess, inferred peril or in, is still there, right? When Imp- Implied peril, sorry. Hang on. The next episode is called Planet of the Daleks. Quite. So the, Earth. The, presumably, or Draconia. I reckon Earth. Yeah, I mean, we're, well, I mean, we're I, egocentric, and yeah, but I mean, I also reckon, I, I, I reckon we're done with the draconians. We're just done. We just go like goodbye. Oh, I, I think that'll be a throwaway scene. Maybe there'll be a Skype call with a draconian. I'll bet you a pound 
that we don't even hear the word draconian again. Done. Done. Yeah. One pound. Yeah, you heard this, guys. One pound, we don't even hear it. I think there will be a mention of them, possibly a Skype call, but I don't think it's going to be a plot about the draconians. All right. Pound it is. Pound. Play along at home. Bingo. All right. Send us in your pound. (laughs) (laughs) Question for you. So, where did Joe get a banana? And is it weirdly racist that she gave it to the Ogron? <laughs> Wait, what are you trying to say? I'm saying that the Ogrons are, are weird. Are you saying because the Ogrons are in effectively blackface? Sort of, yeah. Ogrons feel awkward, and I can't really put my finger on why. Uh, that uh, they've racified the mute brute. Oh, that's interesting. I, To me, they feel awkward because I get the impression that they are mentally... Yeah, that too. All of it is awkward. Yeah. The Ogrons are awkward. They they're really awkward, yeah. and and you don't understand why someone like the master would team up with them. Well, okay. So here's the other thing. So they're mercenaries, right? Yeah, galactic mercenaries. Yeah, we had this conversation in uh, Day of the Daleks, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, yeah, that's when we met them the yeah, first yeah. time, I think. So they're mercenaries. Yeah, they call him ma- as in like yes, master. You know, like not the master, but like you know, in terms of. He's like, no, I mean... I, is I that call... only because they don't know syntax? Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> they don't okay, know articles. Maybe, because I was about to say, like, I certainly... I don't, I don't know where, where you work. But... Or maybe... <laughs> 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 well, you don't call your line manager master. No, no, you give me money and I'll give you services. <laughs> <That's> what... <laughs> I'm just going to call you Bill if that's cool. <laughs> and also, why the Daleks need henchmen? How, how, how could the Daleks... Pay? How are they paid? In what? In bananas and spoons. <laughs> bananas, spoons, and uh, gin and, soup. Like, insurance from the anus monster. Yeah. Yes. Because then and that makes them pins. quite a lot like the Oompa Loompas <laughs> of, of uh, Charlie what? and the Shock Defense. What, the anus monster? No, as in the Oompa Loompas work yeah. for Willy Wonka because yeah. Willy Wonka delivered them from the oh. scourge of some monster in Wonka, in Holy wherever they're fucking from. shit. You're right. They're Oompa Loompas. They are Oompa Loompas. <laughs> okay, that is, so far, my favorite theory <laughs> <laughs> about most things. <laughs> I have a question. Go for it, go for it. So, at some point, the Doc sacrifices Joe to the Ogrons. Oh, when they carry her out of the ship. Yeah, where they're just like, don't worry about him, we'll go get guns and fight, you know, yeah. and it's like, and Joe is like, Doc, he's like screaming <laughs> bloody murder. Yeah. And he's just like, no. Uh, he was a neat... At that point, we're, we're talking like episode four or something. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. So at that point, he's gone through four sixths of this serial and he's still looking for a MacGuffin. He <laughs> yeah. just got one. Yeah. And he's like, not about to give that up. Take her. Now I know what to do for the next two episodes. And that's it. Okay. That was cold, though. Yeah. And also, he's a shit friend. Cold blooded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you feel about Joe's ninja casual outfit? I didn't really pay attention to really? it. Really? No. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I specifically loved her boots, actually, but the rest of her outfit is just ninja cash. Ninja cash. <laughs> I like that very much. That should be a... We should throw a party. and oh, that Dress should, code. That'd ninja be cash. Ninja cash. <laughs> <laughs> Done. And you are invited, podcast land. <laughs> we'll see you there. Or will we? <laughs> okay, so here's something I've written about episode five. Episode 5 is just exposition in case you missed episodes 1 through 4. Because <laughs> I texted you when I had seen the first four episodes. Yeah, and you are into it. I was super into it. I was like, I mean, it's not a good show, but these four episodes have just flown by. I think that's what I said. Like, mm. It took no time at all for me to watch four episodes. Then episode 5 happened, and it was just, oh, someone just sucked the joy out of me. <laughs> yeah. But like the first 10 minutes of episode 5 are literally just them repeating everything up until that point. They're explaining to the Emperor everything that's happened. Mm. Everything. Point is, it's definitely a filler, isn't it? So much filler. My Uncle Hulk has just been like, I need to do shit until we can get to some Daleks. Yep. (laughs) New Dalek voice, by the way. Didn't like it. Didn't like it either, and we have met that voice before. Ian. This is the chap. That's the chap that does the DVD f- enhanced version, right? Oh. Or oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because I had original Dalek. Oh, from Day of the Dalek is and, this weird thing you have. Yeah, and you had I, and DVD I, extra. Yeah, I watched both the versions. Yeah. Well, I skimmed through the original. But yeah, you're right. I think that might be the case. But we've also met him, like his 
we've seen him on screen. He was one of the dudes, Kalik, in um, Shit Balls of Fire, uh, Carnival of Monsters. Mm. He was one of the, you know, the grey yeah, dudes yeah. with uh, the bald guys. Oh yeah, he's very important, isn't he, as a Doctor Who person? One of them is. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. We we listen to our Carnival of Monsters episode because it, it's much better. It's way this. better. But I, I I have a feeling that we went through all the trivia associated with him. Then yeah. I've since forgotten it. <laughs> How about this? Release the first missile. Two missiles fired. Yeah. <laughs> you said the first missiles. Oh, did you say missiles? I oh, did you say well, yeah. maybe? Maybe I misheard that. A black newscaster. Oh yeah. Well, actually, there was one. There was also someone called Patel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Which I found deeply, deeply satisfying. I, I, I bet you did. <laughs> uh, what else have I written? We are regular trustworthy dragon monsters. I like, so I quite liked the, um, I said I liked the racial slur. But like, <laughs> you know when. Oh, dragons. Dragons. Yeah. And that as a, like, which really, it's a deft touch to tell you that there are still tension. You it's know? true. That, you know, the humans still refer to them in a derogatory fashion. Yeah. Which I thought was deft. Like, you know, not a big thing, but... No, I, I agree. I agree. It's, uh, for lack of a better word, it's a sophisticated way of, of showcasing mm. that uh, racial bias. But then they are also called draconians. I mean... <laughs> That's the stupidest name. The, they are called draconians. The ogres are called ogrons. No yeah. one's stretching any brain muscles here, <laughs> are they? Like, <laughs> fuck me. The Masters reading War of the Worlds. Why? That is a very different proposition. Uh, because the title seems relevant. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally it. Yeah. It's like, and I'm also just getting the... in all my ideas here. One thing just lands and fucks up another thing and then gets a cold. <laughs> That's the... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> this is no way applicable here. Nope. That's true. Uh, but also, like he, he wouldn't read any literature from any of the, the countless other civilizations that he is aware of. I mean, you, the, you know, there's some other planet where someone wrote an interesting novel. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe, uh, oh, maybe it's just us. It's just us. It turns out when we've uh, travelled out into space, it's like, uh, no, it, we all advanced past... <laughs> yeah, we're just audiobooks now. <laughs> <laughs> the fear machine makes Joe see a sea devil, an ant dude, and a sock puppet. Joe's scared of everything. Everything. This is my point. It would not work. This is the wrong device to use. It is, yeah, it's not a good device. It's entirely the wrong device, yeah. unless you can, unless it had a dial that are like, I'm going to set this to draconian, you know, and then everyone sees No, but then draconians. it's not a fear center, is it? It's just hallucination. Yeah, but that's my point. Like, you, you should have, yeah, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that, that's my point. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I want this to be is basically, I don't mind if it is a fear thing, as long as you can, in some way, tailor it. Didn't we kind of get thing, that in... Fears are subjective, so whatever you tailor. What if I actually have got a bit of a draconian fetish? This is great. We had something similar, didn't we, in Mind of Evil. Do you remember the bucket? The alien in a bucket? Alien in a bucket, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, it was With eating little fear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was eating fear and like bad thoughts and whatever, and then it used all that energy to project people's fears into them, and it would kill them. Hmm. And in fact, there was a Chinese uh, woman who, uh, the Chinese delegate, do you remember, it was like a mm. UN convention or whatever, the Chinese delegate made someone see a dragon. Fair. Bingo, goddamn bongo. <laughs> yeah. And now it is time to rate this. Did we laugh or hate this? Bing bong, bing bong, hey, la 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 la. Ratings. We've already discussed this now, so I'm not going to go into any depth, but nothing was done of the political tension between these two civilizations. And we already said it, that's the way it should have gone. And whether that's just a House of Cards, political intrigue, yada yada, or if that is an actual Battlestar Galactica, gritty, sci-fi warfare, either one of those routes would have been fine. But just having this weird stalemate that is more stale, less mate. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was I've good. Come back to the mic for that. <laughs> Fuck me. No, but instead of this, this ridiculous stalemate that apparently is there for no reason whatsoever it takes it down for me the the other thing that takes it down for me is how repetitive it is i like having the master there i like having the master kidnapping the doctor and i like having i, I even like the the doc and joe being imprisoned by either draconians or by humans but i don't want each and every one of those things to happen five times in six episodes that definitely takes it away from it was cool though quite enjoyable so i'm going to give this a 
Oh, I have not thought about this at all, and I'm going to regret it. Oh, wait, hang on. I also have to say props to Delgado, because he was fantastic. I loved Delgado in this. And if this is the last time that we saw him, then at the very least, he played it up 150%. He delivered. Unfortunately, the subject matter isn't as good as it could have been. I'm giving this a uh, ball sack. Shit balls 2.0. 2.0. Right, I'm going to be much more concise than you, I think. Okay. Um, because you've covered most of the points. This was just impotent, basically. Like, no one could display it, you see, because there was nothing to be an agent against. It would have been nice if, you know, like I said, one of those things had happened in terms of injury on either side. So the draconians could have attacked, humans could have attacked, the draconians could have had an, a coup, the humans could have had a coup. There could have been all sorts of things. None of those things happened. The Daleks could have revealed themselves. That didn't happen. The Ogrons could have been acting as some sort of double age or, or thought to be on, on either side of this frontier in space. Yeah. None of it happened. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so we get six episodes and like, wait, well, maybe, maybe in the next one, or shit is, or hell is going to break loose. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Happened. No. So that leaves me with a very round 1.8. 1.8? Yeah. It's, I not, had that. it's not very round, is it? No, no. Well, <laughs> it's 80 I mean, you round. could round that <laughs> to something else. Okay, yeah, 1.8. Nice. Well, that's the, that's the uh, um, number I had in my head before we started. I, I wonder if we are going to change our minds in either direction after we've seen the next serial. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Set in stone. <laughs> Listener minis. So our first Listener mini comes from Paul Fauber. Hello, Paul. So Paul, in his own inimitable style, has written a very long piece. It's a, it's a uh, massive essay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's fantastic, by the way. Perfectly synopsizing the serial. But um, not just that. Also going into depth on other items, sort of behind-the-scenes stuff. So we thought we'd read out an incredibly short excerpt, but read the rest of this. Yeah, please go to whobackwhen.com. So Paul writes, Writer Malcolm Hulk wrote this first half of the second sequel to the Daleks' master plan, withholding the real villains until and within the final episode. Both stories featured great model work, but the conclusion of the 70s space opera was sadly anticlimactic, despite the cliffhanger, and marked the last time actor Roger Delgado would portray the master. Indeed, which is extra sad. Extra sad. This is how I found out, by the way. I didn't, I didn't know until I read this. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, truth be told, we, we had a quick like, five-minute break in between uh, our racings and, and these, and I did skim through them, and he passed away. Oh. That's why. Oh, that's, that's why it. this is his last one. Yeah. Oh. I know. I will remember him as... As the master from maybe other serials. In his but, pomp, in the Damons. Yeah. But he was... I maintain, I think, Delgado was fantastic in this one. Yes. Yes, I will concede that. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Ladies and gents, as Nick said, please read the full review in its complete and utter splendor on whobackwhen.com. I knew you were going to say splendor. How weird is that? <laughs> and you can follow him on Twitter as well. He is at Wordsmith Paul. Next up, not a list of mini, but in um, no uncertain terms, relevant public service announcements from the OBX pirate himself, Robert. Hello, Robert. Who says that if you watch Doctor Who Classic on Britbox or Amazon Prime, then apparently Plans of the Daleks doesn't exist. It's not included. And, and you would automatically go to The Green Death, which is the one after. So, public service announcements. If you are using Britbox or Amazon Prime, instead, do as OBX Pirate did and watch it on Daily Motion instead. Yeah. So, otherwise, you're going to miss the conclusion. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much, Robert. Next up, Trenton Bless. Trenton Bless. <laughs> Bad to get blessed. Hello, Trenton. T Bone. <laughs> Trentonian. <laughs> it's a quirky script that goes in all directions, remarks Barry Letts in the DVD commentary for this six part serial. You're constantly being surprised, which is the mark of a good script. This is not full of cliches. Again, Barry Letts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can't. Just for the record. Well, just in quotation marks, it's hard to say, like, this is, so this is Trenton, this is Barry Letts. It's easier to read than it is to denote. Yeah, fair. Trenton goes on. Indeed, this serial is one sharp turn after the other. The Ogrons return unannounced, which probably led people to the Daleks straight away. But then when it's revealed to be a plot of the Masters, it threw people off. Talking about the Master, when he steps into the office of Earth's president in episode 3, it was definitely a shock for sure that I appreciate the subtle reference to the Daleks with that logo on his chest. Meanwhile, the Doctor and Joe are in trouble yet again, seeing as they are captured and escaped time and again in the usual runaround. Don't get me wrong, the Doctor and Joe are wonderful, but this is possibly the most cliché thing in this story. Mm. It's the padding issue that many six-part serials suffer from. I did like the scene with the Master and Joe in the end, where the Master is just being thwarted by Joe in his attempt to hypnotise her. It's great! 
The Draconians, continues Trenton, are a fantastic addition to Doctor Who, with even Pertwee himself citing them as his favorite aliens. Such a shame they have yet to return to the series. The Delgado Master is on form once more, and it's great to see that he went out on a high after the abysmal appearance in the Time Monster. Sadly, we wouldn't see him return as just months after the serial aired. Roger Delgado was killed in a motor accident in Turkey. Oh my goodness, it just gets worse and worse. I would consider this one of his best appearances since he arrived on the scene in season 8 of the classic series. This serial, though it could indeed be considered filler, is definitely a great story. But once you pair it with the following story, that's truly when it becomes great. Ooh. And oh, we'll get to that. 3.8 out of 5. Nice one. It's confirmed one's opinion of this serial can be modified by viewing the next one. Okay, back to that's being... clearly back happened to, to Trenton. Back to being... Um, uh, meta. Yeah. How do we do serials? How, so, uh, no, we yeah. don't. Yeah. So if this is this is all we had, yeah. if this was the end, sum total of this, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but very possibly, and I would I would suggest that we do this because we did this in New Who, I can't remember, with the angel double feature, I think, that at the end of part two, we just went like, hmm, so now would we go back and change our minds? Okay. So, but it doesn't officially change the score. Right. Yeah. Trenton? Awesome stuff. Thank you very much for sending in your mini. People of uh, Podcast Land, you can follow Trenton on Twitter. He is at Trenton Bless. That is Bless with two S's. Next up, we got Peter Zunich. Peter! What up, Pete? <laughs> Hello, Peter. <laughs> so, Pete has a series of points, so I think we'll just double team, right? Yeah. So, first, he just says, brilliant, fantastic story. But the note of points are, first, a female president, great role, great actress. Draconians, so amazing. Bring them back, please. A warning of danger, bulk flour. Yes, it gets <laughs> oh, delicious when there's lots of it. <laughs> we didn't talk about the flour. We, we didn't just talk about, about the, flour. the flour. Holy furry shoulder pads and wrist pads and boot pads. Ogrond, complete with blob-worshipping backstory. <laughs> lots of sitting around in prison cells. Great Dr. Joe chemistry. Political intrigue and a noise that the doctor can't hear. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wait, hang on. Mm. Time out. Why can only Joe hear this noise? Mm. This didn't even dawn on me until now. Thank you, Peter. All right. <laughs> Next notable point. Not the master. Oh, wait. It is the master. Not the Daleks. Oh, wait. It is the Daleks. <laughs> Joe overcomes hypnotic influence. Twice. A prison on the moon. And an activist pawn left to rot in solitary. Space... W oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Poor guy. Uh, space walks. And interesting yet clunky spaceships. Amazing costumes, locations, and set design. Except for wrestling-garbed guards with balls for ears. <laughs> <laughs> Drashigs and mutants and flashbacks. Oh, my. <laughs> The doctor is shot, but not by a very effective gun, it seems. Everyone just gives up and runs away. Seriously, instead of claiming victory, they panic and leave, including the master. It makes no sense. The telepathic circuits and a message to the Time Lords. Hello? Time Lord Psychic Reception Bruce is speaking. Ha <laughs> ha! Fooled you! I'm not really here, right? Now, uh, if the universe is burning, then leave a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Beep! <laughs> It's the doctor again. The, the big war just broke out. Millions dying. Uh, go clean it up, please. I'm going to have another lie down. Uh, the situation earns an urgency rating of 4.4. Thanks. That is uh, way more than I gave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that seems like an obvious statement to make, but I think it's still important. Awesome stuff. Thank you very Thank much, you Peter. Too. Right. Next up, Matthew Dennison. No, no, no. Matthew Dennison. <laughs> oh, no, no. I insist. Matthew. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> that gets so funny <laughs> every time. Right. Matthew writes, On just his second trip in the now-functioning TARDIS, it's clear that the Doctor has as little control over it as ever, this time narrowly avoiding a head-on collision with a soon-to-be organised cargo freighter. And so begins the absolutely fantastic frontier in space. Oh, you betray yourself, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I loved this story, says Matthew. Everything about it feels epic, from the galaxy-wide setting and political intrigue to the brilliant Draconians and Ogrons, two of the most, quote, real-seeming aliens classic who ever produced. The regulars are all on fine form, and it's all topped off with a genuinely surprising Dalek appearance. Even the terrible monster in Episode 6 manages to be epically bad. A common complaint about Frontier in Space is that the Doctor and Joe spend most of the story locked up, but I thought this added to the tension. The TARDIS crew are helpless to influence events and initially without allies. Well, except for the doddery old peace activist in pyjamas. I think his full name being Professor Bombletron the Fifth. The Fifth. <laughs> yeah. 
The main failing has to be the Ogron Eater, the most laughable monster on Doctor Who to date. It's so bad that the ending had to be recut, leaving the final showdown between the Doctor and the Master as a confusing mess. Still, I'm glad that the final memory of Delgado on Doctor Who is this, rather than the dire Time Monster. A few other problems. General Williams sure got over his hatred of draconians rather quickly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and due to messing up the timing of the episode uh, of episode one and never quite getting back on track, the cliffhangers are all rather lackluster. Still, overall, it's fantastic. I'll give it a 4.5. Woof. Yeah. You know what? I'm not going to change my rating, but all of these positives that we're reading out, they're really making me think, oh, this is... It's better than 2.0. I mean, I think you're all suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder... You especially. I'm from Stockholm, yeah. Exactly. I suspect that at the end of part two, I'm going to go, yeah, actually now in this context, I, I give this a higher rating. I don't think I would ever go as far as 4.5, but yeah. <laughs> Regardless, awesome, awesome mini. Thank you very much, Matthew. Right, next up, we have a new contributor, David E. Hello, David. Hello, David. So, David writes... Welcome aboard. Hello there. <laughs> First of all, can I say that I absolutely love your podcast? You can. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we permit that, thanks. Um, I'm all caught up to the current ones, but I'm utterly heartbroken that I've only just discovered it. No. I've already covered most of the best show has ever been, in my opinion. Pertwee and Tennant are my favourite dogs by miles. Oh, anyway, wow. on to Frontier in Space. All right. David says, I first saw this on a massive two VHS box set in the 90s, which I ordered from the local boots. This, for me, is one of Pertwee's finest. It's a space epic in the truest sense of the words. The highlights are Roger Delgado is brilliant in this. Agreed. Especially when he's reading H.G. Wells. Disagree. Inexplic- <laughs> Inexplicable. Well, I mean, Re- Delgado no, is a always... perfectly great version of reading the book. He, he, he's, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> Just I don't understand why that book... Um, The spacewalk is so good. He continues, It seems that shoulder pads will continue to grow in size over human history. We get to see a Pertwee sock. And then the low lights. Katie Manning improvising. It's cringeworthy. The (laughs) oh-so-scary Sainsbury's bag monster. (laughs) Bag monster. (laughs) That's very, very relevant. What does General Williams mean when he says, One dominant life form, a large and savage reptile. The Ogrons don't look like reptiles, neither does the bag monster. (laughs) This being Delgado's last appearance as the master. Yeah. That's sad. We're going to have a drink just after this to... In, in yeah, definitely. With better vodka. With better vodka. Yeah. Such a shame. I didn't know that he had passed away, but wow. Okay, David also says this is up there. There's no rating. What would you give this? I'm scared from zero to five. Decimals permitted. We're curious. Let us know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I stopped there in case you, you'd reply. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard. Glad yeah. to have you aboard. And then finally, Kyle Rath or the Sinister Stupor Spy. Hello, Kyle. Warning, trashings in rear view may be more than they appear. Ooh, political intrigue. We hate the dragonses, don't we, precious? <laughs> and the nasty, filthy humans. <laughs> yes, precious, we hate them too. I can't do the voice. Yeah. <laughs> Try it, go for it, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and how will we get rid of them, precious? <laughs> That's awful. I don't know. The master will do it, precious, with ogrons. Lots and lots of ogrons. And a fat scrotum monster. But I digress. <laughs> And this is the episode where we find out that neither you nor I can do a... a, a we can't do any voices. <laughs> it's only true. But the only voice I can do is Ernie from Sesame oh, That's it. it. I don't know, Bert. <laughs> Fuck, you took that from me too. <laughs> Two? <laughs> what am I taking? <laughs> Take another thing. I, <laughs> okay, Kyle writes... <laughs> A political thriller where I feel actually invested in the outcome is rare in any show, but somehow the first two to thirds of this serial manages to pull me in. The final Delgado master serial, Tragedy, is very possibly his best. The Doc and Joe continually locked up, got old after a while, but the switch when General Williams realised the depth of his own prejudice is fucking spectacular. The draconian masks are the tops, and the debates between the senior members of both factions only enhanced the weight of the situation they were all facing. Does the Master's final attack on the Doctor have any lasting effects? Delgado's passing shortly after this series definitely impacted Pertwee's decision to leave the role. Wow. And Kyle gives this a 2.8 out of 5. Drop the scrotum monster, the phoned-in Dalek, and anything outside of the draconian human conflict, cut it to four episodes, and this serial could have been one of the best of the show's whole run. 
Yeah, you know what? I agree with that. Yeah. Like, yeah, change all of these tons of things. <laughs> <laughs> these seemingly integral things. <laughs> yeah, 2.8, by the way. That, that's not entirely Maybe far off from what we, we gave this. Maybe Carl's the fairest of us all. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kyle, thank you very, very much for sending that in. Ladies and gents, why don't you high-five Kyle online? You can. He's on Twitter. He is at Sinister Super Spy. That's super without any vowels. And that's it. Next up... Uh, on the classics, we have the continuation and conclusion of this serial, namely Planet of the Daleks. Next up on uh, the New Who's, we have Cold Blood, which is also the continuation of a serial. It's the continuation and conclusion of The so, Hungry Earth. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, holy smokes, this hasn't happened before. This is uh, first on Who Back When. In Cold Blood is also the title of a Truman Capote book. It is. It's on there, on the shelf. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Other than that, it's... So you'll be in Finland. I'm, I'm going to Finland, yeah. And, I'm uh, not. You're not going to Finland. <laughs> Come with me. Sure. Yeah. It'll be cold and my aunt will love you. <laughs> that that sounds we'll great. We'll feed you tons. It's going to be great. Also great. Yeah, yeah come. I mean, so that, <laughs> what was your feed? What, what's Finnish food like? Uh, there'll be like a, a cabbage gratin type thing, which is a traditional nice. Finnish thing at this time of year. Cabbage gratin? Yeah, that's the best explanation I can give you. It's, <laughs> it's not a gratin and there is more than just cabbage in it. But that's... <laughs> If you were to translate the Swedish word for it into English... I like that we're going to get there and it'll just be turkey. <laughs> if you were to translate... The, the Swedish name for it yeah. is literally... Would be literally translated as cabbage katan. But it is more than that. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck it... Okay, tune in, ladies and gentlemen, to see whether I, were, I flew to Helsinki <laughs> and got some cabbage katan. If you are curious about Gratin. it... <laughs> If you're curious about it, why don't you follow us on Twitter? We'll probably post a picture of us in Finland. <laughs> <laughs> you're on Twitter. You're at Nick Aleli. That's sort of like ukulele, but with Nick. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where can they find you? Uh, I'm at Ponkin. If you don't know how to spell that, use a Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. You've been a wonderful audience. Until the next time, rock on. Be right and excellent to each other. And ciao ciao. Merry Christmas. Blamo. Did you enjoy the show? Then please do what the cosmos compels you to and spread the gospel of who back when. Tell your friends. Don't have any friends? No problemo. Tell some strangers. Like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash who back when. All in one word. Are you on Google Plus? The final's on Google Plus. That's plus who back when. And when you do, tell us why you're on Google Plus. Who Back When just got its very own Twitter account, no lie, so give us a follow. You guessed it, that's at Who Back When, all in one word. Check us out on SoundCloud, vote us up on Reddit, listen to us on Stitcher, and head on over to our website, whobackwhen.com, where you can leave a comment, submit a review of your own, and peruse our visual index of aliens, monsters, and more, which increases in Kablamos with every episode. And lastly, give us a rating and review on iTunes. Not only would it make us super chuffed, and it really, really would, but as thanks, we will transmigrate your iTunes nom de plume into the credit list of trailers for fake Doctor Who audiobooks produced by Who Back When. Have a poke around our bonus episodes to make more sense of that. That's it. Rock on and be rad and excellent to each other. Catch your earballs in our next classic Who review, new Who review, or, <laughs> still funny, audio Who review. Cha ciao. Who back when?